Wind power has been touted for its green credentials, but decisions about approving locations for energy projects in Queensland is causing concern for councils. On the Atherton Tablelands, the local council is facing one of its biggest tasks this year, deciding the fate of a $500 million wind farm at Mount Emerald. The council is calling for help from the state government to clarify the decision-making process. Natalie Perhonen reports. On a clear day, the turbines near Ravenshoe can be spotted for miles around. This machine-driven farm has been operating for more than a decade and has become part of the landscape for this dairy herd on the Atherton Tablelands. But now a push to significantly increase the region's wind power is creating turbulence. Those wind, windmills will be giant windmills, they'll be twice the size of the ones that we have in Ravenshoe. In Ravenshoe they, they'd be considered baby windmills uh, compared to the ones that, we, that are proposed. If an ambitious project goes ahead near Walkerman, the countryside would be transformed into the largest wind farm in northern Queensland. And Mount Emerald could become home to up to 80 turbines. So there are a lot of concerned residents in that area and uh, they're, they're um, letting their concerns be known to us as councillors. One of those residents is Steve Lavis. My property's two kilometres from it and uh, there's a lot of other properties, a lot less. In fact, there's houses about one kilometre from, uh, from a turbine or thereabouts. So there's a lot of issues that comes, comes to mind that's going to affect us. Uh, not the least, the agricultural issues, the noise issues, the, um, the health issues associated with the noise of a turbine. So the list goes on, the visual amenity or the loss of it, uh, the devaluation of our land values. But Jeff Dutton from Ratch Australia, the main company behind the proposal, says the majority of locals do approve. We have done research and found over 75% of the people support the project. So we say that the majority of people want it and we are working hard to, to make sure that everybody is informed about all the information about the plant so that we can do, the council can do informed decisions about the project. He argues the impact will be minimal. Of the 7,000 acres, only 1.5% will be disturbed by the wind farm. But from the council's perspective, the responsibility for such a project is daunting. We really do have to consider very carefully uh, whether we allow this to go ahead because Mount Emerald is uh, in, a, in an area where there, are, there is quite a build-up of population. It is a farming area but there is um, you know, a lot of small farms, there are bigger farms too and we have a, um, it's an area where we have uh, a lot of um, employment on our farms. The Mayor says it's a complex decision made even more difficult with a lack of guidelines from the state government. In the other three states, New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia, uh, they have in place a 2.5 kilometre buffer and there's even talk of them going out to a 5 kilometre buffer. So that tells you that there are problems, there, there have been problems with uh, wind farms in the past. She's urging Queensland to quickly come to the table to catch up to its counterparts. Now that these wind farms are just starting to pop up around Queensland, the bigger, well, the bigger uh, proposals, uh, I think it's very, it's imperative, it's very important that the Queensland Government step up to the mark and, uh, and bring in that framework for us to work towards. In a statement to 7.30 Queensland, the Deputy Premier Jeff Seeney says the Government is progressing with a single state planning policy and plans to release a draft for public consultation this year. The advice for the Council is to wait. This will replace all existing policies and it will provide guidance to local government about how the state's interests in planning and development are to be met, including the appropriate management of alternative energy developments such as wind farms. The government says it is taking into consideration frameworks already in place both interstate and internationally when it comes to drawing up the guidelines. It is important that all matters associated with wind farm developments, including those relating to noise, are investigated to ensure the right regulatory environment is in place that allows for the responsible development. For now, the issue of wind energy will continue to dominate the regional agenda, with proponents determined to see it go ahead 
and the council determined to get the best outcome for their community. We're investing money in it and we're actually working now going forward. We're working with the transmission company to, to work out the connection. And in the end we will be the ones to have to make that decision as to whether they go ahead or not.